Welcome back to the John Gets Games playthrough for Tiny Epic Pirates. At this point, we have played through the first few turns of the game, and that happened in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, then you can find a link for it down below in the description, or you can click the I up there in the top corner. Now, as always, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I really might make mistakes as I play through the rest of this game, and that will let me put corrections on the screen, which will make this as accurate a playthrough as possible. All right, let's jump back into the game. At this point, it's now time for the green player to take their second turn of the game. They are of course going to start by choosing their captain's order, and they want to skip over the pillage action and to do a trade action. That means they have to put a deckhand over here, and fortunately for them, they are allowed to pull deckhands from the repair area to place down over there in order to do that jump. After that, they can sail up to one time, because currently they don't have any deckhands in their rigging deck assignment. So they are going to sail over here, and then they are going to use this token, which lets them move up to two more spaces. Now, this is going to be discarded from the game after that, and that lets them sail down here, where they now have the option of selling their sugar cane. After they've finished sailing, they can now do their captain's order, and they can sell up to three sugar cane, and it looks like they have two. So that means that they are going to get five gold coins for each of these, which is obviously as good as it gets. Then these will be put back into the booty bag, and the price for sugarcane will drop all the way down to two gold each. So they obviously have to take their ten gold, which brings them from one all the way up to eleven. And remember, it costs twelve or thirteen gold to bury your treasure out on those islands. So they are very close to being able to bury their first treasure. Now they've finished their trade action, and it does not look like they have any triggered bonus actions, so their turn is done, and the blue player can now go. So they can start by choosing a captain's order, and they are going to pick this one here, which lets them search. Now before they do that action, they can sail up to one time, and in this case, they will sail over here into a storm. Now that is going to cause them to be jostled once and they've decided to move this deckhand down to repair for that. Now it's time for them to do a search action, which lets them look at this token right here, and ooh, it will immediately give them two gold, and then this is removed from the game. So they now go up to three gold total, and when we look down here, both of their cards have triggered bonuses on them. Now, when they picked up this crew member over here, they didn't quite realize that the locations out on the map uh, will either let you do a plunder action or let you do a trade action. So they can't actually do both of these because the location that they're at is kind of exclusive to one or the other. So uh, this might look like a good synergy, but realistically, it just means whenever they do a search action, they have two good options for themselves as a triggered bonus. So this is still pretty great for them, and they are now going to trigger the bonuses of their captain. Now, they cannot bury a treasure yet because they do not have enough gold, and then they can do a plunder action. So they can look out to their location, and this spot lets them plunder two cubes out of the booty bag. So in this case, it looks like they have found a coffee as well as a sugar cane. So those will get added down onto their boat. Now that they are done with that plunder action, they have the option of doing a sell action, but unfortunately for them, they are not on a location that lets them sell. Now in the future, if they are able to hire this crew member, you'll notice they also activate on a search action, and that lets them sail. So potentially they could get a combo going where they could plunder, sail, and then trade some of their resources within that same turn. At the moment, that is not the case though for the blue player, so they are now done with their turn. Well, it looks like it's now time for us to go, and if we did not spend any deckhands, we could do a trade action, but at the moment, we just have one of the gunpowder resource. Now, that would get us three gold, and we can tell that the blue player is very likely to sell their coffee soon, and when they do that, the selling power of the trading amount of our gunpowder is only going to go up. So I think we should avoid trading on this turn, and instead, let's do a plunder action. Now we can pull one of these deckhands from repair over there to do that skip action, and now we can sail, and since we are now a pirate, we can sail twice. So we can look out here to the map, and my plan is to get over here to try and attack this merchant on our next turn. They have a gunpowder resource, and that would mean we would have two of the gunpowder, which again is hypothetically going to trade in better once the blue player does some trading in with their coffee. So I think let's head in that direction, and that means let's avoid, uh, actually we don't have any storms to avoid, so let's just go one, two, and then once we land over here, we can do our plunder action. 
In this case, we can only pull one cube out of the bag, and it looks like that one is going to be a rum. Okay, so we can add that onto our ship. After that, we don't have any triggered bonus actions with this plunder main action, so our turn is over. That means the green player can go, and they've decided to crew up. Before they do that action, they can sail up to one space, and in this case, they've decided to sail right over here. After that, they can crew up, and if they want, they can spend one gold to discard all three of these before they pick. But they actually like the idea of hiring this crew member here. Now that says that when they do a sell action, they can also sell one rum and one coffee together as long as they are at a location that accepts rum or coffee. Now when they do that, they will get seven gold regardless of what the prices for those resources are over there on the black market. Now this also has two fours in the top corner, so for each four they roll in combat, this will give them two hits. Well, they can place their new crew member down onto their ship. And then they can fill this spot in on the crew market. And this one lets you gain one gold every time you do a search action. All right, the green player is done, which means the blue player can go. And they have decided to do a trade action on this turn. Now they can sail up to one space. And that's going to work out just fine for them because they can sail up here where they can trade their coffee. Now they are going to trade both of their coffee and fortunately for them, coffee is now worth five gold each because of course the sugar cane sold earlier when the green player did a trade. So that means this is going to go down to the bottom. They are going to get 10 gold and then they can add these back into the booty bag. Well, they already had three gold, so this will bring them up to the maximum gold amount of 13, and they certainly have enough to bury treasure later on one of their upcoming turns. All right, they are now done with their turn, which means it's now time for us to go, and I think let's try to take down that merchant ship. Now, we can do that by doing a search action that will then let us attack, but first of all, we have to move up to two times. When we look over here, you'll notice we only have to sail once in order to be on the same space as this merchant we want to target, so let's just sail over there. Now we can do our search action, and we can look at this. Ooh, okay, this is a later token, and it says we can spend this when we enter a space with a storm to not get jostled. So let's keep that. And now we can do our triggered bonus action, which lets us bury a treasure and then attack. Now we aren't going to be burying any treasure at this point, but we can attack that merchant. When we look up here, we can see the black merchant has an attack of two, so that means we need to get three or more hits in order to be successful. Now, if we get two hits, then we will tie and get a surefire token, which wouldn't be the worst thing to happen to us. So let's do the attack, and as you can see, we already have two hits because of this deckhand and this crew member. So that means one of these needs to be a four, five, or a six in order for us to be successful, and we just barely got it. We hit a four, and this one does nothing, so that means we are doing one, two, three damage in this attack. Well, that is more than two, so that means we are successful in attacking this merchant. So this will be discarded. We will then gain two coins, which means we are now up to five. Next up, we can take this gunpowder resource from the defeated merchant ship and place it onto our ship, and then this merchant ship is going to reappear at the port that is farthest away from our ship. So that is going to be this port right down here, and that means both of the merchants are on the same location. After that, a new cube will be taken out of the booty bag, and we can place it onto that merchant, and it looks like, ooh, both of the merchants are currently holding coffee. The final thing we have to do is draw a new merchant ship card, and just like before, that is a two attack ship with a two gold bonus on it. All right, it looks like our turn is done, so the green player can go. And they have decided they are going to do a hideout action. Now remember, you can skip over the hideout action without actually placing a deckhand on it, and you can also skip over previously placed deckhands. So if they wanted to, they could go all the way over here without placing any new deckhands, and they could then actually reassign any deckhands they jumped over or landed on. Now in this case, they've decided they would like to do a hideout action instead. Now before they do that action, they of course can sail, and they can sail up to one space. Now you can only do this hideout action if you are on a location with a cove, and there are exactly four of those locations out here on the map. Now at the moment, there is just one location that is within one sailing space of the green player, and that is to the west. So they are going to sail right over here, and then they will do their hideout action, which will put them right here into that cove. 
The next thing they do for their hideout action is they can take all of their deckhands from the wheel as well as any of these spots down here and then reassign them to the deck assignment locations of their choice. In this case, they have decided they will put one deckhand on rigging. And then they did consider putting two deckhands on extort, but they actually will do one, one, and one, putting this one over here on cannons. Well, that finishes up their hideout action, and they don't have any triggered bonus actions. So now this shipping line activation will happen. Now you'll see they have one deckhand on extort because they put it there as part of this hideout action. So that is going to generate them one coin, which gets them up to 12. And 12 is enough to bury treasure on many of the island spaces out on the map. After that, both of the merchant ships will move as well as the navy. And all of this will be controlled by the player previous in turn order from the green player, which is actually going to be us. Now, when we move the merchant ships, we have to move them so they get closer to the port they are pointing to. And I think let's just have the black ship sail over here and then have the orange one go over there as well. Uh, we are currently nowhere near these merchant ships, so we figure we may as well shove them into a storm so that it will cost a jostle action if our opponents want to come over here and attack them. After that, the navy ship is going to sail, and it is going to have to get closer to the green player. Now, it's going to move two times because the green player has currently not buried any treasure, and I figure we will move it one, two spaces like that. Alright, we are done controlling these ships, and I would like to reiterate that there is no penalty for sailing through the location with the Navy ship. It only attacks during a shipping line activation, and it also only attacks the active player. So if the Navy ship was to sail through locations or onto locations with opposing players, then nothing would happen to them. It's only the active player who would be targeted. Okay, it's now time for the blue player to go. And they have decided they would like to do a crew up action. Now that means they are going to have to reassign this deckhand over there to skip over that. They of course don't have to put one over here to skip over the hideout, and this deckhand was already there so they could skip. Now at this point, since they skipped over a deckhand that was already on their wheel, they can reassign this deckhand, and they're going to put it down onto rigging. Now before they do their crew up action, they can sail up to two times. And that's important considering they crossed over the shipping line on their wheel, so the Navy ship is going to be sailing twice towards them. And if they only sailed once, then the Navy ship would catch them. Remember, if that happens, the Navy ship will jostle all of their deckhands down to the repair area. Obviously, it is a good thing to have deckhands on those deck assignment slots, so they are going to try to avoid the Navy by sailing here once and then sailing up here for a second time. After that, they can hire crew, and they have decided to hire this one here. Now, I already discussed the combo that this card will give them, because as you can see, all three of their cards now have search icons, and this lets them do a plunder action, then sail towards a harbor where they can trade their goods, and then they can trade right there, all within a single action, and it appears they are hoping to do that on their next turn. Next up, we do have to replace this spot on the crew row, and this one lets you do a sale action after you do a trade action. Well, the blue player does not have any triggered bonus actions, but they did cross over the shipping line on this turn. Now, they don't have any deckhands in their extort area, and they don't really care about that considering they were already maxed out on their gold. After this, the merchant ships and navy ship will move, and the green player is going to control those. In this case, they have decided to move the orange merchant ship over here and the black merchant ship over there. And then the navy ship wants to move two spaces closer to the blue player because they've still not buried any treasure yet. So the navy ship is going to go one, two, like that. This means it's now time for us to go, and we have three good options available to us. Uh, the first option is simple. We could go to a hideout. That would activate this crew member, which would give us two free gold, which does seem nice. And of course, we could reorganize our deckhands. Now, the next option is we could go over here and recruit somebody. Getting more uh, crew members on our ship is certainly a good thing. And the third option is we could place both of our deckhands over here to head all the way over there to do a sell action. Now, I think that might be a good idea. It looks like the blue player is potentially going to be selling on their next turn, and it's not obvious what they will be selling yet, but if they sold gunpowder, then that would really hurt us considering we currently have two gunpowder, and each one of those is worth four gold at this point. So I think maybe what we should do is that instead. It does mean that we are zipping around this wheel, which is fine, so that places us over here. 
Now that has crossed us over the shipping line, so we are going to uh, do those actions at the end of our turn, which means if we put this here, then that would turn it into one gold, which is certainly not a bad thing. Under normal circumstances, I think I would do that. However, it looks like we are going to get 8 gold when we trade that gunpowder in, and 8 plus 5 puts us at 13. So instead of doing that, I figure let's put this down over there on rigging. Next up, we can sail, and it looks like we can go up to 3 times, which means we could hypothetically sail to both of the ports that want us to trade the gunpowder. We can sail right down here, going 1, 2, 3, and that means this navy ship would not be able to catch us. If we went over here, obviously the Navy ship would catch us, but remember, the only penalty is all of our deckhands will be put down into the repair area. Currently, the only deckhand we have that's not on the wheel is in the rigging spot, so it would not hurt us that much overall if the Navy caught us at this point. Also, if we went down here, we would become jostled when we went through the storm, and we could spend this token, but I don't think this is an amazing time for it. So I think in this case, let's just sail over here with the full expectation of being caught by the Navy. After that, we can sell up to three of our gunpowder, and it looks like we have two gunpowder. And as I said before, each one of these will give us four gold. So that means we will get eight gold total for this, and now the price for gunpowder will drop down to two. Next up, we will gain eight gold, which brings us up to 13. And now that we have finished up our turn, the shipping line will activate. In this case, the blue player will control the ships, and they are going to have this merchant ship sail into that corner, and this merchant ship is going to sail over into this storm. After that, the navy ship is going to sail right over here, and it is going to attack us. Now, when that happens, we get super jostled, and all of our deckhands go down to repair. Honestly, this isn't too bad of a thing for us at this moment, because we only had one deckhand on our assignments, and this means both of these are down here, and we can use them to skip to other actions on our next turn. Now, it is true that having these out on the wheel is nice, because it lets you be flexible with the actions you want to take, and when you cross over them again, you can assign them down to these really nice deck assignments, but I still thought it was okay to be caught by the Navy on this turn. Now, we did just lose an attack, but remember, you do not gain surefire tokens when you are attacked by the Navy. Alright, it looks like our turn is done, so now the green player can go. In this case, they just want to move their captain once, which means they are going to do an attack action, and before that, they can sail up to two times. In this case, they want to sail twice over here, and they will get jostled when they enter this storm. So they have to move a deckhand over to repair, and they'll move the extort deckhand. Next up, they are going to attack this orange merchant. Now it has a total attack value of 2. And currently the green player is rolling just 2 dice because they are not yet a swashbuckler. In fact, they have not gone up on this track at all yet. So we can look down here and see that they will get hits on 1, 2, 3, and 4. And 4 is a number they are looking for in particular. They also have one automatic hit from this deckhand. So in this case they can roll the dice and they did get a 4. In fact, they got a 2 as well. So this means they are getting one, two, three, four hits, which is one more than the three they needed to defeat that merchant ship. So they are going to gain two gold, although they already have 12 gold, so they will only gain one. After that, this will be removed. We can draw another merchant card, and this one shows the next orange merchant will have a strength of four. It will give four gold when it's defeated, and if this was a one or two player game, then defeating this merchant would increase the legendary value of that pirate. Now, after that, the orange player is going to take this coffee resource, and you'll notice they now have a coffee and a rum, which matches up with this uh, crew card that they have, which is one of the reasons they decided to go after that. Next up, this orange merchant is going to reappear at the port farthest away from the green player, so that will be over here. And finally, we can draw another booty cube out of the bag, and it looks like the orange merchant ship is now carrying sugarcane. Alright, that is going to finish up the green player's turn, so now the blue player can go. And it looks like they have decided to search. Now this is going to trigger a lot of bonus actions, but the first thing they will do is sail up to two times. In this case, they just want to sail once, which is going to send them right into a storm, so they will get jostled. In this case, they will move a deckhand from cannons over to repair for that jostle penalty. Next up, they could do a search action, but you'll notice somebody has already done a search action on this area. So they will not do that action, and that's fine. All of those actions are optional. 
Now that they are done with their main actions, they can move on to their triggered bonus actions, and they're going to do up to four of them. Now, they have to start with their captain, and this lets them bury treasure, and they are going to spend 12 out of their 13 gold to bury this treasure here. When we look back to the map, you'll see this spot does cost 12 gold, so they can put that chest right over there. And now, as part of this bonus trigger action, they can do a plunder action. Now, as you can see, they are on a spot where they can plunder two cubes, which is the reason they sailed into this storm and decided not to go onto a spot where they could have done a search action. So they can pull these out, and I suppose it is worth noting they could have sailed up here where they could have plundered twice. However, they want to be potentially close by to spots that they can sell, and they're not sure what they're going to find, and it looks like that is going to be a gunpowder as well as rum. So they were a little bit bummed. They were hoping to have two of the same type of good, but either way, that has finished out the plunder action. Next up, they can trigger their crew members in any order of their choosing, so they will go with this crew member that says when they do a search action, they can now sail up to their current sail value. Well, that is still two, so they are now going to sail two spaces over here. After that, they can perform this action, which lets them trade, and as you can see, they have rum, gunpowder, and sugarcane on their ship, and they are now in a port where they can sell sugarcane. They would have loved to sell this rum, but they could not get to one of those locations with two movement from where they were. So they can sell this sugar cane, and that is going to give them four coins. Sugar cane will then go down to being worth two coins each, and this will be added into the bag. Well, the blue player should have been at one gold coin there, not two, sorry. And when they add four to that one, they are now up to five coins total. All right, it looks like they are done with their turn. All right, it's now our turn, and currently we have one resource on our boat. So I think we should probably do a plunder action. And before we do that, we can sail. Now, I think in this case, we should sail over here, which does mean we get jostled. However, at the moment, all of our deckhands are on repair. That means normally we would not be able to do this. However, we can use this token to negate the effects of one storm. So that is gone. We are now over here, and we can plunder two cubes out of the booty bag. So let's see what we find. In this case, that is a gunpowder and a sugar cane. I was really hoping to see some rum there, but we did not get so lucky. After that, we have finished our plunder action, and we haven't triggered any bonuses, so now the green player can go. Well, I don't think anyone is surprised to see them search, considering they are full up on gold, and before they perform that action, they can sail up to two times. After considering their options, they are actually not going to sail at all, and now they can do their search action. So they can take this token, and oh, okay, that lets them immediately take a random good out of the booty bag. So they are feeling pretty lucky that they currently have a spot to take that good on their ship. So they can grab the bag and then pull a cube out, and it looks like they have found a rum, and that is the second one that they have on their ship. With their search action done, they can now go on to triggered actions, and their captain card lets them bury treasure. In this case, you can see it's going to cost 12 gold to bury over here. So they can spend that, which brings them down to 1. And then they can place this treasure over there onto that card. After that, they do have the option of plundering, and you'll see that lets them draw two cubes out of the bag. Well, they figure there's no reason not to do this. They can always just not take these cubes. Their ship is obviously full already, and they found coffee as well as sugarcane. Now, in this case, they have decided they are actually going to take this coffee and get rid of one of their rum. Uh, they can tell that rum currently is worth the most, but they can also see that it is likely that rum will be sold before their next turn, which will make coffee more lucrative, so they are going to plan ahead to try and sell that coffee instead. Now, after that, they are done with the captain bonus actions, and they are actually done with their turn. Well, it's the blue player's turn, and they have decided to move their captain quite a bit. They are going to skip over the trade action by putting that deckhand there. They're going to skip over this spot that already had a deckhand, so they can reassign that deckhand after. They're going to skip the hideout as well as this plunder using that deckhand, which means they can now do another crew up action. Now, before they do that, they can assign this deckhand that they jumped over, and they've decided to place that deckhand onto rigging. After all of that, they can sail up to two times. And in this case, they have decided just to sail once over here. Next up, they can add crew to their ship, and they have decided to go even more all-in on the search action. As you can see, all of their cards have this action, so that search action is very potent for them. 
Now, when they added this crew, they do have the opportunity of having a mutiny on board their ship, and they have decided to do that. That means they can flip their legendary token over to show that they cannot mutiny again, and after that, they can flip over their captain card. Now, the only differences here is the numbers are now 1 to 3, and instead of plundering, they can attack when they do this trigger. Now, this isn't too surprising considering that lets the blue player attack more often, and with all of these crew members, they are getting pretty formidable. They get three hits if they get a one, they get two hits if they get a three, and they also get two hits on a two. In addition to that, they get a single hit for the four and the five, so they only miss with sixes, and half of their possible die rolls give them multiple hits. Well, the blue player is now done with their turn. This means it's now our turn, although before that happens, I just realized we forgot to draw another crew member over here. So this one, when you do an attack, lets you re-roll any one or six values that show up. Now that is pretty nice considering it gives you hits on twos and threes, so by definition it lets you re-roll things that aren't hits for that card. Well, let's now take our turn, and considering we are full up on gold, I do think we should search so that we can bury that gold. Now the first thing that we are going to do is potentially sail, and we can move up to twice. So we can look out to the map, and I think we should sail two spaces down. That way we can bury our treasure onto this location, which will cost 13 gold instead of 12, but this will also let us attack this merchant later on this turn. Now after we have finished sailing, we can do our search action, and that lets us take this token, and it says we immediately take a surefire token. So we can add that there, and that certainly could help us with the attack that we are about to do. After that, it's now time to trigger bonus actions, and the one on our captain card says that we can bury treasure. Now that is going to cost us 13 gold. So we can spend that, which brings us down to zero, in order to bury this treasure chest. That's going to go right down over here, and we have now buried one out of our three treasure chests in the game. Now the next thing that we can do is an attack action, and with this we can attack this merchant. Now if we look over to the black market board, we can see that the black merchant ship only has an attack value of 2, so that means we need to hit 3 or more to win this. So let's look down here, and unfortunately we don't have any deckhands on the cannon spot, but we do have this uh, crew member over here which gives us one guaranteed hit. So let's roll these two dice, and it looks like we got a 6 and a 2. Now that means we have one hit and one miss, and we could spend this Surefire token to turn this into a 6 if we wanted to, or a 5 or a 4. Now if we did that, then we would end up with 3 hits and we would be successful in this attack. Or if we didn't do this, then we would tie with that merchant and take another Surefire token to put over there. Now these Surefire tokens do seem pretty nice, but I do also like the idea of winning these battles to get even more gold coins. So I think let's spend this token in order to turn this 2 into a 4. This means we have 3 hits total, which is going to be enough to defeat this ship. So we can take 2 gold, which will bring us up to 2, and then we can steal this coffee cargo from that merchant. Now we have a full ship at the moment, which is unfortunate, but we can tell that sugarcane is currently worth just two gold each, so let's throw that overboard in order to take this coffee. That's going to go into the booty bag, and now this merchant ship will go to a port that is as far away as possible from us. Now it looks like that is equidistant for them, so we'll just put this merchant ship over there, and then we can pull a random cube out of the bag. Well, it looks like they are once again transporting coffee. The last thing to happen is we can deal another card over here, so both merchant ships now have a strength of 4. Alright, I think we are now done with our turn. That means it's time for the green player to go, and they have decided to do a trade action. Now they do have to skip over the plunder action, and they will do that by taking the deckhand from the rigging spot and placing it over there. Now they can sail up to one time, and with this movement they are going to head over there. Now after that they can trade, and this area lets them trade coffee. Currently they have two coffee on board, and it looks like they have decided to sell just one of those, which is going to give them four coins. So that means this is going to slide to the bottom, and it does look like they probably should have kept the rum instead of the coffee on their previous turn, and it appears they made a mistake there. Either way, they can take four coins, which will bring them up to five. And now that they are done with their main action, they can trigger their bonus action, which says they can sell a rum and a coffee, as long as they are at a port that takes rum or coffee, and they will get 7 gold total for that. 
Well, at the moment, they do have rum and coffee, and they could potentially have uh, gotten more coins for these individually, but this lets them liquidate all of their resources with one turn so that they are now empty, which frees up spaces for more efficient plunder actions in the future. So these will go back into the bag, and they can gain 7 coins, which is going to bring them up to 12. Now, the other reason they decided to do this is because they know they can't store more than 13 gold anyway, so this gets them up to 12, which is in range to bury their second treasure. All right, they are now done with their turn, which means it's now time for the blue player to go. Now, I don't think anyone is surprised to see them do a search action, and before they perform that, they can move up to two times. In this case, they have decided not to move at all, which means they can take this token, which will let them move up to two times later on. After their main action, they are going to trigger many bonus actions. Now, the first one is burying treasure. As you can see, that would cost them 13 gold, but at the moment, they only have 5 gold, so they cannot do that. Next up, they can do an attack, and it looks like they want to attack the green player. So, the blue player can now start off the attack, and they can roll two dice. So, in this case, they got a 1 and a 4. Now, that looks to be a pretty good roll for them. This 1 is worth 1, 2, 3 hits overall, and this 4 is going to be worth just 1 hit. So, that is 4 hits on 2 dice. Now, they don't currently have any deckhands over here, so 4 is their number. So, now the green player can defend themselves, and they are going to roll 2 dice. In this case, they got a 5 and a 2. Now that 2 is worth 1 hit, and if they spend their Surefire token, they can change this to a 4. That would get them up to 3 hits, but that is not enough to equal the 4 hits coming in from the blue player. Because of that, they've decided they are not going to bother spending their Surefire token, so that means they are going to lose this battle. So they are going to become Jostled, which knocks this deckhand into repair, and as a consolation prize, they will gain another Surefire token. And it is worth noting that you can never have more than three of these on your ship, so considering they have two out of three, they should probably consider attacking something in the future. Next up, the blue player will gain a legendary level, bringing them up to the pirate level, so now they have a base movement of two, and this has given them two coins. So they will go from five up to seven. And that is going to finish up their triggered bonuses on their captain card, but they can do all three of these as well. Now, they can do them in any order, so this one is simply going to give them a gold, bringing them to eight. And then this one over here will let them move, and they can now move up to three spaces. In this case, it appears they just want to move twice. They are going to go here into that storm, which will jostle them, and then they will move down over there. So let's see what they do for the jostling penalty. And that's going to have to be this deckhand from the rigging, but they were still able to do that second move because they have a base movement of two now. Now that they are finished moving, they can do a trade action. In this case, they are at a port that wants to accept rum, so they can sell their one rum, which is going to give them five coins. So they can add that into the bag, and now the price of rum falls all the way down to two. Well, when they add 5 coins to the 8 they had, they now go up to 13, and just like the green player, they have enough gold to bury their second chest. Well, it looks like they are now done with a very successful turn. This means it's time for us to go, and the only way to not be caught by the navy ship is to hide out, and I think that is going to be a good idea. Now, we of course can move up to 2 times, and in this case, the only cove we can reach is right over here, so we can sail over there once and then perform the hideout action, which lets us slide here into that cove. The next thing we can do is reassign all of our deckhands, and I think that we should maybe try to get a little bit of gold, and we should also consider going over here to increase our potency, and I'm not sure if we need to go faster at this point. Now, that means we should put this over there or there, and I'm kind of tempted to go over here on cannons so that we can be more effective when combating uh, potentially our opponents so that we can gain more levels on this legendary track. That being said, if we take a coin right now, we would definitely get it and we would not just potentially have that jostled off to not get any benefit. So I think we'll go with this. So that means we have finished up our hideout action and now we can do any triggers down here. This one is going to give us two coins, which is going to bring us up to four, and that's finished up our bonus actions. So we can now check over here and see that we crossed the shipping line. That means we can take one coin for every deckhand in the extra area, and that is going to be two more coins, bringing us up to six. After that, we can have the blue player move both merchant ships as well as the navy ship. 
In this case, Blue wants the orange merchant ship to sail into that storm, and the black merchant ship will sail into this storm over here. And then the navy ship is going to move up to three spaces towards us because we have buried one treasure. Now we are just two spaces away, but we are also hiding in this cove, so the navy ship is not going to attack us. And of course, they do not bother any of the non-active players on the same location. Well, that finished up our turn, so now the green player can go, and they have decided they want to crew up. Now before they do that action, they can move up to one time if they want. And in this case, they want to sail over here. After that, they can pick one of these crew members, or they could get rid of a gold to draw three new ones. But in this case, they would like to draw this crew member here. Now they will give them hits on fives and sixes, and every time they do a trade action, they will be able to sail afterwards. After that, we can draw another card, and this one says, every time you plunder, you will then be able to move the navy ship up to two times, and this gives you hits on fours, fives, and sixes. It's worth noting that with this navy ship movement, you can ignore the standard rules and send it in any direction of your choice, although it will still ignore your opponents. So the green player can add this crew member to their ship, and it looks like they now get hits on every single roll of the die, but they still only get multiple hits when they roll fours. Alright, they are done with their turn, so now the blue player can go. And at the moment, they have 13 gold, which means they would like to hurry up and try to bury treasure again. So in this case, they are going to wrap all the way around their board over here to the crew up spot. They do, of course, need to place a deckhand onto this location to jump over it. And after they do that, they can reassign both of these deckhands. After considering their options, they are going to put both of these down onto cannons. Now they can move up to two times. And with the first of these moves, they are going to sail up here, which unfortunately is a storm, so that is going to jostle them. This means they have to send a deckhand over there, and they do still have one more movement available. In this case, they want to sail here. Next up, they can do their crew up action, and they are tempted to take this crew member, considering that lets them reroll any ones and sixes that they roll, and this increases their hits for twos and threes. However, at the moment, it seems like they're doing a lot of their attacking based off of the bonus action from searching. Now, you cannot chain bonus actions like this, so they have decided instead of doing that, they are going to take this, which will increase their hits on threes and sixes, and it gives them another opportunity to attack every time they do a plunder action. After that, we can refill this market, and this crew member says after you plunder, you can move both of the merchant ships up to two spaces. Now, you do not have to move them towards their ports, but you do have to keep them pointing towards the correct ports. So they can add their crew member over here, and their ship is full. Remember, you cannot have more than four crew members plus your captain, and if you crew up again, you can get rid of a crew member to replace. Now by adding this in over here, it looks like they have a hit on every number on the dice. They get just one hit from fours, fives, and sixes, but they get two hits from twos and three hits if they hit three or one. So a full one-third of their outcomes give them three hits, which is definitely a good thing. Well, that's finished up their bonus actions, and now since they crossed this shipping line, that is going to activate. Now the green player can control the ships, and they don't currently have any deckhands to extort any extra money. So the green player will have the orange merchant ship sail up here, and the black merchant ship will sail over there, and then the navy ship is going to sail up to three times because the blue player has buried one treasure. Now this means the navy ship will go one, two, and immediately attack the blue player. Obviously, this is a guaranteed win, and when that happens, all of the blue player's deckhands will become jostled into the repair area. Alright, the blue player is now done with their turn, which means it's time for us to go, and I think we really need to crew up. I think it was maybe a mistake to skip over that in the past. Uh, we have one crew member, and the blue player somehow has four, so we definitely need to start catching up there. Uh, so in this case, we can start off by moving up to two times. But honestly, I don't think we should sail at all, considering we are in a pretty good spot to access uh, trading locations on future turns, so let's just stay here. Next up, we can hire a crew member, and honestly, I don't love any of these options. They seem okay, but I think let's spend one of our gold to discard all three of these, and we can put them to the bottom of the deck, and then we can pull out three more. Now, in this case, it looks like we have a new ability, 
This says that every time you search uh, as a bonus action, you can cycle one good on your ship with a random one from the bag. Now, this option lets you reroll threes and fours when you are doing a main attack action, and this one lets you sell when you do a search. Now, that is interesting. We have been having a hard time getting rid of all of the uh, cargo on our ship, so that would give us more options for selling our stuff. You know what? I think let's go with this crew member right here. That means we can replace them with another one, and that lets you do a searching action every time you do the plunder action. Next up, we can add this crew member to our ship, and it looks like we now get double hits on fours and sixes. We still miss on ones, twos, and threes, which isn't great, but hopefully we can recruit some more crew members in the future. All right, I think that is going to finish up our turn, so now the green player can go. Well, it looks like they have decided to simply hide out on this turn, and they can sail up to one space. In this case, they don't actually want to sail at all, and then they are going to duck into this cove to hide out. After that, they can reassign all of their deckhands, and it looks like they want one on extort, one on cannons, and one on rigging, so they're just going to go even across the way. After that, they can see that they crossed the shipping line, so they will get one gold coin for every deckhand in extort, which is going to bring them up to their maximum of 13, and now we can move both merchant ships as well as the navy vessel. So let's have the orange merchant ship sail over here, and we can have the black one sail down into the same spot, and then the navy is going to sail one location over here, where they unfortunately miss the green player because they are hiding in that cove. All right, it's now the blue player's turn, and they are pretty unhappy about this situation. They are planning on searching, but unfortunately they don't have a way to bury treasure while also attacking anybody with this turn. So they're hoping for a big, efficient turn, but it looks like they are probably just going to be focusing on the burying of treasure. But to start things out, they can move up to two times. Well, honestly, they kind of want to stay here because they are hoping to attack somebody, and that leaves them in the middle of the map, which will keep them flexible. As you can see, the green player and us are both on cards that do not have spots to bury treasure, and neither of these merchant ships are on a card that can have treasure buried because this is already blocked out by the green player. So the blue player is just going to stay put, and then they are going to search, although you'll notice there is not a token here. So actually, I think they've changed their mind. They are going to sail two times over here. That lets them search this token, and they do have this token over here, which lets them move two more times, and they figure they could use that to try and catch a target on a later attack turn. So they can search this right here, and <laughs> it says later on they can move two more times. So they have two of these, which is leaving them very flexible as far as moving around the map is concerned. Next up, they are going to bury treasure, and that's going to cost them 13 gold. And it looks like they do indeed have that. So they can bury this treasure right here, which is their second out of three going down onto the board. Obviously, that treasure burying action came from this bonus on their captain card, and now they will not attack anything because they don't have any targets. Next up, they can activate all three of these crew members. This one is going to give them a single gold, and this one lets them sail while that one lets them trade. Well, unfortunately for them, they only have gunpowder, and both of the gunpowder selling locations are a storm away. Now I say unfortunately because the blue player currently has all of their deckhands in the repair area, so they are currently not allowed to sail into a storm. So that means they can sail, but they will not have any trading actions available to them. And their sailing value is 2, so they figure they will just sail these two spots back to the location they started their turn at. Alright, the blue player is done with their turn which means it's now time for us to go, and we have had a full ship of resources for, I think, too long. So let's go ahead and skip over the attack action and go to trade. Now we do have to assign a deckhand to this spot to jump over, and now we can sail up to two spaces. Well, we could sail over here to sell our gunpowder, but we could also sail up there, and this spot is close to allowing us to sell our other goods, so I think that is probably going to be better. This does mean that we have to sail through a storm to do that, so we have to become jostled. And I figure we can move this deckhand from extort down to repair for that. Next up, we can sell our one cube of gunpowder, and that is going to give us five coins. Then the price for gunpowder will go all the way down to two. 
So that's going to bring us up to 10 gold. And unfortunately, we are still a few gold shy from being able to bury our next treasure chest. At this point, I'm feeling like we are falling behind our opponents. Uh, perhaps we went a little bit too long without having a strong crew. But um, either way, we are going to do our best to get back into the game. Now, at this point, I think we are done with our turn. And that means the green player can go. Now, they have decided they would like to bury one of their treasure chests, and they can do that by skipping over the attack action and going to search. Now, before they do that search action, they can move once. And in this case, they are going to sail down here. And then after that, they can search, which means they can take this token, and it says that they can use this later to avoid being jostled by one storm. Next up, they have triggered the bonus action on their captain, and that lets them start by burying a treasure. As you can see, that's going to cost them 13 gold, and it looks like they have exactly 13 gold. So this is going to go down to zero, and they can bury this chest. So they can place that over here, and then the next thing they can do is a bonus plunder action. As you can see, this uh, map card lets them plunder a single cube from the booty bag. So in this case, it appears they have found rum. Now that is currently worth three gold each, and they can put that on board their ship. All right, it looks like the green player is done with their turn, so now the blue player can go. In this case, it looks like they want to attack, and in order to do that, they have to assign a deckhand from their repair area down onto that action. After that, they can sail up to two times, and it appears that they have decided to sail over to where we are. Now, that did go through one storm, which means they will be jostled, and that will knock this deckhand back down into the repair area. Now they have decided to attack us, and it looks like they are still rolling two attack dice. Well, we are not feeling super confident about our odds considering how strong their crew is, and that was a very good roll for them. Now it looks like each of these threes is going to be worth one, two, three hits, so that is six hits coming in towards us. Over here, we are also rolling two attack dice, and it looks like we got a one and a four. Now the one is not worth anything, but the four is worth two hits. We have another hit from this crew member and from this deckhand. So we got up to four hits, but that is not enough to beat the six hits coming in from the blue player. So that means we are going to lose this and that will jostle one of our deckhands down to repair. Now this is gonna give us a sure fire token, which we can place over there. And then after that, the blue player will have their legendary status go up to Corsair. And this means they have a base movement of three and they have unlocked a fourth deckhand. Now they have decided to put this deckhand down onto the extort spot. And we can look over here and see that they're still rolling two attack dice instead of three. Although if they win one more battle against an opponent or against some of the stronger merchants, that will go up to four. At this point, we have just seen these four power merchants, which only let you go up on the legendary track if you are playing a one to two player game. So we have to see some more merchants get knocked out before the merchants will let us go up on this legendary track. All right, the blue player is now done with their turn, which means it's now time for us to go. And I think we should search, which means we have to put a deckhand over there. And after we search, one of the bonuses will let us sell. Now, before we do any of that, we can move up to two times. And with this, I think let's sail two times over here to the spot which will let us sell our rum. Now, before we get to that, we will search. And it looks like there are no search tokens on this spot, so there's nothing to search for. And after that, we can go into our bonus actions. Now, this uh, captain card lets us first bury treasure. And unfortunately, we are at 10 gold. We will be at 13 gold later on in these bonus actions, but we have to do the captain's action first. So after that, we now have the option of attacking, but you'll notice we aren't attacking anything. Uh, the reason for that is because we set this turn up around selling things instead. So now we can do that. In this case, we have one rum, so we can sell that to the market, which is going to give us three coins. So that means rum is now worth two coins each. And when we take three coins, we go up to our maximum of 13. All right, I think that has finished out this turn. This means the green player can go, and they are simply going to head to the plunder spot. Before they do that, they can, of course, move up to one space. And they have decided to sail into this storm. So that is going to jostle them once, which means they can move one of these two down. And actually, they could move again if they wanted to, but they are okay with uh, being where they're at. So they're going to keep this deckhand here and move the rigging one down to repair. After that, they can do their plunder action. And in this case, they can draw two cubes out of the bag. 
Now, at this point, they are hoping to find coffee, considering they can pair that up with their rum, <laughs> but they did not. Uh, that is two gunpowder, and it is still nice getting a matching pair of resources, though, for when you trade at a market. All right, that's finished up their turn, so now the blue player can go. And it looks like they want to reassign two of their deckhands, which will let them head all the way over here and let them do a search action. Now, they did cross over the shipping line, so that is going to happen at the end of their turn. But before they get to that, they can move up to three times. In this case, it looks like they are looking to attack a merchant ship, so they are just going to sail down one space, and then they will get jostled from this storm. So they will move this deckhand down to repair, and now it's time for them to search. In this case, the token was removed quite a while ago, I think, so now they can move on to their bonus trigger actions. The first one they have is with their captain, and they do not have enough gold to bury. Also, there is not space to bury over here, so now they can move on to attacks. In this case, they want to attack the orange merchant, and that currently has an attack of four. So they can start the attack, and they still roll two combat dice. They would have to get up to the swashbuckler level in order to unlock that third die. Now they can roll these dice, and they got a six and a four. Now that is actually a somewhat low roll for them. Uh, they get three hits when they hit ones or threes, but in this case, they get one hit from a six and just two hits from a four. So they only have three hits here. Now, they need to get to four hits in order to tie with that merchant, but three hits is not even enough to do that. So they have actually lost this battle. I think they maybe got a little bit cocky, and that means they are going to gain a surefire token, which they can do a lot of damage with, obviously, but then they will also become jostled. Now, that means they have to remove one of the deckhands from this wheel, and they will pull this one down to the repair area. Next up, they can activate all three of these crew members. This one is going to give them a gold coin. This one lets them sail, and the last one lets them trade. It looks like they want to sail first, and they have a sailing distance of three. And in this situation, they want to head over here. Once they land on this spot, they are going to stop, because over here they can trade their gunpowder, and they will do that with this crew member's bonus action. So they can get rid of one gunpowder and that is going to be worth three gold coins to them. After that, gunpowder will go down to being worth two coins each. So they gain three coins, which will bring them up to five. After that, the last thing that happens on their turn is they can perform the shipping line actions. Now, they don't get any gold coins because they don't have any extorting deckhands, and now the green player can move both merchants as well as the navy vessel. So the green player will have the black merchant sail over here, and the orange one will sail up like that, and then the navy ship is going to sail up to four times because the blue player has buried two treasure. So that means that the navy will go one, two, three, and they are going to catch the blue player and immediately defeat them in combat. Fortunately for the blue player, this isn't that big of a deal. Uh, this just means all of their deckhands will get jostled down into repair, and <laughs> most of them were down there already. All right, that has finished up the blue player's turn. This means it's time for us to go, and unfortunately, we are on our search token while also having our max gold. So we are not allowed to ever do the same action two turns in a row, even if we had enough deckhands to make that happen. So I think let's travel over here. We shouldn't go to the hideout because, well, this will give us gold coins and we are already maxed out. Now, we don't have to place any deckhands when we jump over this, and we have crossed the shipping line over here, and this will let us hire crew after we move. Obviously, we can move up to two spaces, and hopefully on our next turn, we can go back over here to do a search action to bury our second treasure. Now, unfortunately for us, there is no way we are going to outrun the Navy ship on this turn, so we don't really have to worry about that. Now, we do currently have some coffee on board, and both places to sell coffee are over here, so I think let's just move two times over to that spot over there. Next up, we can hire a new crew member, and if we wanted to, we could take this one, which will give us hits on two and four. That would be the first time we would get hits on twos, and we would get three hits on a four, which is certainly not bad. Now, instead of doing that, we could take either one of these, which would give us triple hits on fives or sixes, and I figure maybe we should take this one over here. Um, being more consistent is probably not going to help us catch up. I think we maybe have to go for some potentially bigger plays to make that happen. So we can add this one onto our crew. Then we can pull another one out for the market. Now that one says that after you do an attack action, you can sail and it gives you a hit on ones and sixes. 
All right, we are done with our actions, so now the shipping line action will happen. We don't get any gold, and now the blue player can move both merchants as well as the navy ship. In this case, blue will have the orange ship sail over here, and the black one will sail over there, and then the navy ship is going to sail up to three times because we have buried just one treasure at this point, and that is enough for the ship to catch us. So that means it will attack us, and we will lose, and that's going to jostle all of our deckhands. So both of these will head down to repair, and that is going to finish out our turn. Next up, the green player can go, and they are looking to trade. Before they do that, they can move up to one time. In this case, they are going to sail over there, and then they are going to trade this rum resource. And that is just going to give them three coins. Then this will go down, which makes the gunpowder now worth three each. And when they add their three coins, that's going to bring them up to three total. Next up, they can do bonus actions, but this one does not apply since they don't have that set. Uh, but this one does, so that will let them move up to their speed, which is still 1. However, in this case, it looks like they are happy just to stay over here. With that, they are done with their turn, so now the blue player can go. And it looks like they want to have another chance at taking out that orange merchant ship. In order to do that, they have to attack, which means they have to assign a deckhand over here. And now they can move up to 3 times. In this case, the merchant ship has just moved once, so they are going to head over here in hot pursuit and then attack that merchant. Now, the merchant currently has an attack value of 4, and unlike last turn, the blue player now has a surefire token, so they are guaranteed to make at least a 3 value happen. Well, this was a better roll for them. 3 is going to be worth 1, 2, 3 hits, and the 6 is worth 1 hit. Now that means they are actually only at 4 hits, which would tie them with that merchant that would give them a, a surefire token, but it would not give them the victory that they want. So they are going to use this token to turn this 6 into a 1 or a 3. Now that 1 is worth 3 hits overall for them, so they now have an attack of 6, which is enough to defeat the attack power 4 coming in from that merchant. So they are going to steal this sugarcane cargo. The orange merchant will then reappear down in that port, and they will have a random token on it. In this case, they are still going to be shipping sugarcane. Now, after that, the blue player is going to gain four coins, and they are not going to gain a legendary point because this only happens in a one to two player game for this level of merchant. Now, that means they still get the four coins, and then the last of the four value merchant cards will go out over there. Well, four coins, when added to their five, is going to get them up to nine, and that is definitely scary considering they just need to get to 12 or 13 gold in order to bury their final treasure over here. So things are still going very well for the blue player. Well, blue is done, so now we can take our turn, and let's bury this treasure. Now that is going to take all three of our deckhands, letting us jump over these actions to get over here to search, and then before we do that action, we can move up to two times. Well, we currently have coffee on our ship, and we could potentially trade that over here with a bonus action while also burying a treasure down there. So I think let's sail twice. And of course, when we head through this area, that has a storm, which is going to jostle us once. In this case, we can pull that deckhand over to repair. And now we can search, although it looks like that token has been taken from this spot already. After that, we can do our bonus actions, and our captain will let us bury treasure. As you can see, that is going to cost us 13 gold, which means when we spend it, we will go all the way down to zero. After that, we can bury this chest, and we officially have two out of our three chests buried out onto the board. Next up, we could potentially attack, but there are no valid targets over here. And then after that, we have these two options. Now, this one lets us trade a cargo on our boat with a random one from the bag, and this one lets us sell. Now, this could be good later on in the game, but we are already set up to be able to sell uh, coffee over here, and coffee is worth four coins, which is almost as good as it can get. So let's ignore this one and go ahead and sell that coffee. So we can remove this from the ship and then take our four coins. We can then put that in the bag and then lower the value of coffee back down. So four coins is going to bring us up to four. And now we are done with our turn. This means the green player can go. And they have decided to do a hideout action, which is going to skip over the crew up action. And they can do that with this deckhand. Now, before they do anything else, they can move up to one time. 
although they are currently on a spot with a cove, so they've decided not to sail at all, and they are going to tuck in over here to do that hideout action. Next up, they can reassign all of their deckhands, and they've decided to put one on rigging, and the other two are going to head over to extort. Now, after that, they don't have any bonus actions from their crew, so they can now do the actions for crossing this shipping line. The first of those is going to give them one coin for every deckhand on the extort deck assignment. So that's going to bring them from three coins up to five. And then we can move each one of the merchant ships and the navy ship. In this case, the orange ship is going to head over there and the black ship will head down here. That means they have made it to their port and they will then turn around and start heading towards the other port again. After that, the navy ship is going to move up to four times because the green player has buried two treasures at this point. So that means it will go one, two, three, four. And even though it made it to that spot, the green player is hiding in this cove, so they will not be attacked by the Navy ship. All right, that has finished up the green player's turn. This means it's time for the blue player to go, and they have decided to place deckhands on all three of these spots to skip over all of these and then land on this spot with the trade action. Since they landed here where there was already a deckhand, they can assign that deckhand immediately and they're going to put it down onto cannons. After that, they can move up to three times, and they have decided to sail here for one, there for two, which is going to jostle them in a storm, and then down here for their third move. When they get jostled in the storm, this deckhand is going to head over to the repair spot. Next up, they can do their trade action, and as you can see, they have one sugarcane on this ship, and they are at port where they can sell it. This means they are going to get 5 coins, and then the price of sugarcane will drop all the way down. Well, 5 coins will get added to their 9, and that means they actually cap out at 13, and then it does not look like they have any bonus actions to take. This means the last thing to happen is the shipping line activations, and they don't get any extra coins, so now the green player can move both merchant ships and the navy. So they'll have the orange ship sail over there, and the black ship head into this storm, and then the navy is going to move up to four times. In this case, they just have to move two times, and then they will successfully attack the blue player. That means all of their deckhands will get knocked down into the repair area. Well, the blue player is done with their turn, which means it's time for us to go, and unfortunately, this is probably going to be our last turn. It looks like the blue player is most likely going to bury their treasure, but let's do the best we can. Now, I think what we should probably do is plunder a couple of resources, and that means we have to put a deckhand over here to then skip over all of these spots. Uh, when we jump over both of these locations, we can reassign them, and I figure we'll send them over to rigging, and now we can move up to four times. So let's turn over here and go one, two, three, and as soon as we enter this space, we are going to become jostled in the storm. That means that this deckhand will head over to repair. Next up, we can plunder twice, so let's pull two random cubes out of the bag, and it looks like we found a rum as well as coffee. After that, we don't have any bonus actions to trigger, and we did cross this line, so we will not gain any coins because we don't have any crew members on extort. Uh, perhaps we should have sent one of them over there, but it's fine. I guess we needed them over there in rigging to make it this far. Uh, next up, the blue player will move both merchants as well as the navy ship. So the orange ship will go here, and the black ship will head over there, and then the navy is going to try and reach us. It'll move up to four spaces because we have buried two treasure, so it will go one, two, three, four, and it just barely isn't able to get over there. All right, that's finished up our turn, so now the green player can go, and it looks like they want to sell. That means they have to put all three of their deckhands over here to jump onto that location, and now they can sail up to one space. In this case, they will sail over here, and now they can trade both of their gunpowder at this port. At the moment, gunpowder is very lucrative. They are going to get 5 coins for each, so that is 10 coins total. So that will bring them up to their maximum of 13, and now they do have two bonus actions they could take, although they don't see a reason to do either one of these. Uh, they don't have a rum and a coffee to sell, and they could sail once, so I guess they figure they'll do that. And in this case, they'll sail up there. That puts them in position to be able to bury their third treasure, and they do have 13 gold. Unfortunately for them, it looks like the blue player might beat them out. Uh, it is now the blue player's turn. 
and they have decided to search. They can do that by putting their deckhands just like this. They can then jump all the way over to do that search action, and of course they can sail up to three times before they do this. Currently, they are on a spot where they can bury treasure and where they can attack, so they are just going to stay here, and then they are going to search this token. So it looks like that is going to give them a random crate from the bag. In this case, that is going to be a rum. So they can put that right over here, and now they can start doing their bonus actions. Well, the first one they are going to do is bury treasure because they are searching, and they have to spend 13 gold. They obviously have that, so they can spend this down, and that will bury their third and final treasure chest, which will head down over there. After that, they can attack, and they figure they may as well to try and become more legendary. They are going to attack the green player, and they'll do this with two dice. So they got a one and a two, and the two is going to be worth two hits, and the one is worth three hits, so they are doing five damage and then the green player can defend themselves. They got a one and a five, so they would spend both of these surefire tokens to make both of these fours. That means they have a defense of four because of the two fours down there being two plus two, but unfortunately that's not enough to get to the five of the attacking blue player. So they would gain another one of these and become jostled. And then the blue player can go up one more legendary rank right here at the end of the game. That uh, means if the game was to keep going on, they would roll three attack dice. This also gives them four gold immediately. And then it looks like they still have some more bonus actions. This lets them gain another gold. This lets them sail. And that one lets them trade. And they figure they may as well do that. So they can sail over here and then trade this rum, which is going to give them five more coins. And that will leave them with 10 gold coins. Now, at this point, they did cross over this line, so the shipping activations will happen. And that means the green player can move both merchant ships. And then the navy boat is going to move up to five times because the blue player has buried all three of their treasure. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, and successfully attack the blue player. This means all of their deckhands will go down to repair. And that has finished out their turn. This means it would normally be our turn, however, at the end of their turn we can see that the blue player has buried all three of their treasures, and that means the end game has been triggered. This means we are going to keep playing until we have all taken the same number of turns, and that has actually happened because of course we were the starting player. That means the game is over, and the player who has buried all three of their treasures will win. In this case, that is the blue player, because both of their opponents only got two treasures buried out. Now, if there was a tie, and multiple people had buried all three, then the first tiebreaker would go to the player who is highest up on the legendary track, which is the blue player. Um, if that is still a tie, then it goes to the player with the most gold, which I suppose would be the green player, but obviously green never went up on that track. So the blue player very handily won this game. Uh, green was, I think, one turn off from being able to bury their last uh, treasure here, but again, they would have lost on the legendary track tiebreaker. Well, that has completed our full three-player game of Tiny Epic Pirates. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, even though we did come dead last there at the end. Uh, we were not really competitive at all, uh, but the green player was. Uh, they were one turn away from being able to get all of their treasure chests out, although they would have lost on every single one of the tiebreakers in that case. So it seems like this was a pretty solid win uh, from the blue player there. And I think a big part of that is because they were uncontested in building out a really big search engine in front of them. Uh, they got all of those crew cards that let them uh, do things when they searched. And it seems like in the kind of middle stages of the game, the blue player went really hard on crewing up while both of their opponents did, uh, we were doing other things. I, I considered crewing up a couple times, but skipped over it because, well, I thought it was going to be better to sell the goods in that particular moment. Unfortunately for us, I feel like those were short-sighted decisions because the crew cards are really where your efficiency comes into play. Uh, that's where you can take an action to do several more actions, and obviously the blue player being able to do so many actions on that search uh, uh, main action was uh, really the way they were able to catapult into such a lead. So I think it's likely that uh, the blue player's opponents, like us and the green player, we probably should have drafted some of those cards to stop that from happening. Uh, also, those are just good cards to have, and I think I kind of had blinders on, uh, focusing on the other things and not really uh, working on the crew. Um, obviously, the crew also makes you get more hits when you roll dice, and uh, rolling dice is important to do those attacks, and that's the main way that you can get resources that you specifically want, because uh, when you attack a merchant ship, you know what resource that ship has. Obviously, when you 
attack an opponent, you don't get any gold or resources, but going up that legendary track um, is pretty good as well. This is obviously because sailing faster lets you have more opportunities out there on the map, and also, if you get to the point where you can roll more attack dice, that is when you can be competitive against those much stronger merchants, which also give you the ability to go up on that legendary track. Now, we didn't see that too much in this game. Uh, the blue player got up to that third die right there on the last turn, and I think that's just because of how this game went. I think certain times you're going to play this game and there's going to be a lot more player versus player combat, uh, probably dependent on the crew cards that come out as well as the temperament of the players around the table. So we saw a little bit of that, but this game was definitely, or at least this playthrough, was definitely more focused on plundering, I think, to get the resources that players needed in order to bury their treasure chests. So yeah, I think that is going to wrap up all of my thoughts on this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.